Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. And with me today I have this very special program that I've created with the help of some people that are going to be listed down below. Okay, the purpose of this program is to help you determine what kind of dark period setup you should have so that it would suffice you, it would uh, not suppress your melatonin too much. You're going to be able to very directly see the impact on melatonin and your circadian phase shift by your light setup. Um, I've made this very user friendly, so hopefully you should be able to use this fluently after this video or uh, preferably just by looking at this program, but I'll still go over everything here with you so that you can use it. I'll, I won't go too in depth into the, you know, mathematics, physics of this, because I want this to be very user-friendly. I want almost everybody to be able to use this, just insert the values. And that's been the point here. Um, you insert your data and it outputs if it's a good situation or bad situation, and you see a bit of a bit of numbers, but you know, for a layman, it's very hard to understand what this means. So I think that you should focus just on the message that pops up if the situation is too harsh. Okay, so let's start by going over all of these metrics here. First, we needed to start by, as is said in this B1 cell, uh, make a copy of the spreadsheet that you can go to the file, make a copy here, you click it and it creates a copy on your Google spreadsheet or you can alternatively download it as an Excel file. Um, it will allow you to edit this program, okay? And after that's done, uh, you will able to you will you will be able to edit it, mm, and there are going to be a bunch of different metrics that you can insert here. In this version of the program, the version three, you can input five different light sources at a time. So say that you have a light in the roof, you have your computer in front of you. All these things are emitting light, and the goal is to copy that setup as uh, well as possible. Um, for this, I've used the Planck's law of black body light emittance or radiation to assess um, how much the distribution of certain light frequencies, light wavelengths at certain temperature. And, and it's, a, it's a bunch of physics, but let's not, let's not get into this. If you're interested, um, you can read about it down below, but laymen don't need to focus on it. Okay, so... First here in this B column, uh, we have the temperature and the goal is for you to put the temperature of the light source. So let's say that you have a light bulb. Uh, most light bulbs are going to have a sort of specification for what type of temperature they are emitting. Many are around 4000 Kelvin, 6000 Kelvin, 8000 Kelvin and so on. Um, at, the current, at, at the current time, uh, the, you can only input this at fractions of 500, so you know, like 500, 1000, 1500, and so on. So just uh, input the value that's closest to reality for you. For this one, I'm going to leave it as 8000, and I'm going to make an additional one at 6000 Kelvin. Then you input the distance to the light source. So let's say that you have a light in the ceiling that's three meters away from you. We put that to, oh, sorry. We put that to three. And let's say that you have the second light source as a computer monitor. And we put that at 0 0.5 meters away. Then in this D column, you can edit the power of the light source. So let's say that you have a LED light for this first one. Um, we can put it at, I don't know, 15 watts. You can find out the specifics of your situation by checking out your light bulb. And let's put my computer at 40 watts. Again, this is going to be available on the internet, perhaps, or on the package of your light source. Uh, let's put that my both light types are LEDs. Here's a list of many, many, let's see that you can also see, follow along. Here's a list of many, many, many different types of light sources. Um, 
we have incandescence, halogens, fluorescence, LEDs, natural light, which is a sort of special, special situation and I will show it in a bit more detail later and so on. You know, very different types of light sources that you can fit into your specific situation. Then over here we have the light distribution angle and this is just in what directions the light is being emitted. You know, if you have um, a computer screen, it's not going to be emitting light behind it, for example. So a computer screen is going to be maybe around 120 degrees, while a light bulb would be 360 degrees because, you know, it's a circle, it emits in all directions or about in all directions. And I'll just put the computer type into a LED. Okay, and as I said, we have five different uh, light source abilities in this version. So, after this, after you filled out all your information here, I'm going to also make one for natural light, which is a bit special. Uh, instead of inserting the wattage of the sun, because it's not really comparable, we just input instead um, the lux directly, which you can find from the internet or from this list that I have here. Uh, bright sunlight could be approximated at, uh, you know, 111,000 lux. Uh, if it's a moonlight, it's going to be much smaller and so on. We'll just put that it's a clear blue sky. For this one, you're not going to need to insert any types of um, light distribution angle or distance. But temperature is still going to be relevant, if I recall correctly. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So... After you've done this, we can edit the exposure duration. So let's say that you want to assess what your dark period is going to affect or do to your sleep, your melatonin levels. Um, and your dark period starts two hours before your core. You know, you leave this exposure duration as two hours to see how your setup affects you. In this case, actually, we would probably not be expecting um, a clear blue sky with no direct sunlight. So ju let's just change this to maybe 10 lux instead. Anyways, if we continue, we have this melatonin suppression boundary. Um, the only thing this is going to do is that it's going to pop up a message when you reach it, when you go over it, so that you can get a clear, quick answer for if it's a good setup or if it's a bad setup. This 12.5 that is written here is just based on, uh, from, from a study about how melatonin and SWS are related. And over here in this I column, you can change the best filter match. And in this K column, you can see the allowed filters and with different colors. Um, what I've done here is that I've gone to a website where uh, so a company has determined the uh, uh, filtering specifications of certain glasses and just copied those values, basically used pixel counting to determine um, how the, well the filters are going to filter specific light frequencies or wavelengths. And I've inserted that into the behind the scenes tab. So let's say that you have red glasses or you want, you want to buy red glasses, you want to see which kind of glasses you want to use. So we put, we already have this as number two. Let's leave that as number two. You know, you have red glasses that aren't very dark, but still red. Okay. And of course, this is going to be an approximation. Unless you know the specific filtering capabilities of your glasses, you're not going to be able to do this, uh, you know, perfectly, but it's going to give you an idea of what's going to happen to you. Then when we put the number two here for, uh, as corresponding to the lighter red color, we can see, after all this is calculated, uh, the outputs. And we see here that the expected melatonin suppression percent with this setup, uh, with a light bulb in the roof, the computer in front of me, and the natural light in the evening, that only 3% of my melatonin is expected to be suppressed, which is lower than the suppression boundary and therefore this setup would be good. Um, 
this expected melt and phase shift is just how much later your circadian rhythm is expected to shift, but we don't need to focus on that. It's just an extra detail that I put here. Okay, but let's change this setup up a bit. Let's say that I don't want to use these red glasses. Let's say that I want instead uh, to use maybe number five here, orange glasses. You know, they're much cooler. Let's see what happens if we put number five here instead. Then we scroll back to the beginning and see that our melatonin is expected to be suppressed by 553%, which is of course impossible. But the idea here is that it's going to be much harsher, okay? So uh, we can see here the error message warning your current situation is expected to reduce your melatonin levels further than your suppression boundary. And what this is saying is that this is not a good setup by any means. Um, if you have this, your circadian rhythm is going to suffer and your sleep quality is also going to suffer. So in this case, there are of course several different things you can do instead. Maybe we want to add flux um, as or to the computer, which filters out uh, blue and green light frequencies. Let's put, let's pretend that we have put flux on and we set it to 1000 Kelvin instead. Let's see what happens. Oh, there we go. 2% instead. So this would suffice in this case. We could have a 15 watt light in the in the ceiling, three meters away, and by using a different uh, computer filtering program for the light, this setup would suddenly be okay. We would be able to do well with this setup. And you can play around with this because, you know, of course, the darker it is, the harder it's going to be able to uh, stay awake. And the redder it is, you know, it's going to be more monochromatic, so you're not going to be able to distinguish between the colors. So let's instead try to see how far we can push this. If we put it at 1500 Kelvin, we can already see that we, uh, we, over, we went over the boundary, so this is not good. So in this case, we would stay at 1000 Kelvin with the 2% per, uh, suppression. And as you can see also here, it takes a bit of time for it to register, but it's okay. And let's say that we instead install some curtains like that, so we, we don't have to worry about sunlight anymore. Uh, as you can see, nothing happened here because the difference was so small. And let's also say that uh, we remove the ceiling light, or let's say that we put uh, we we change it to a red light instead, which emits light at 1,500 Kelvin. Now we should hopefully be able to alter this a bit more. Okay, it went down with a single percent. So we can play around with this, you know, and see what's good, what's not good. Um, you can also use these filters to determine uh, which glasses you should buy. Let's say that we don't use any glasses and we only want to use flux. So we put it at a thousand Kelvin and that's going to, you know, 5%. It's clear that this setup will be good. Okay, I hope that you got the gist of this program. It's very interesting to play around with and I won't go into the math anymore. You can find that down below if you're interested in it. We've used a bunch of formulas and it's pretty complicated. But okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you later. Let me know if you have any questions, okay? And remember to nap well, people!